Welcome back to the Martini Works podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Season two. It is. Episode. Episode maybe three. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. That's, a, that's the first time Alex has ever said it right in the history of ever. Thank the you. season Thank you. and the episode. Let me tell you, I'm, I've been on the straight and narrow ever since I've been spreading democracy across the galaxy <laughs> and hell divers. You're okay? damn right, dude. All right, I'm God keeping my brain right. clear, crystal, liberty focused. Mm-hmm. That's it. Which, by the way, that game humbles you. Oh, really, will. really quick. I was like, you know what? I don't have any friends uh, in on my PS5 network. I'm like, I'm just gonna hop in and see what this game is about. Did my first solo mission on hard because I was like, yeah. I played Legendary on Halo solo Three. Game. It's not, not a solo, solo game. game. No, no. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it was crazy. You know, like when you post on Instagram in a while, it's like, oh, so and so posted on Instagram for the first time in a while. I got that notification when Alex turned on his PS5. <laughs> um, One of your friends is online for the first, first time, time in, in three years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. It's like it gotta be the first game you played other than so like that's Gran Turismo. Something. Yeah, you know yeah. that game's big when Alex hopping on. Yeah, I just wanted to give it a shot. It it's is so fan- good. Dude. I don't. I love it. I want to play more. The problem is, is I don't. <laughs> You're like, gonna just want to keep playing. Yeah, yeah. And then I gotta round up the old gang to play together. Uh-huh. It's like you guys are. You guys are a little bit easier to get a hold of. But like I, just, I have to get like <laughs> Lars or, or Dustin involved. It's like an hour gotta, and a half process. Well, you gotta peel them like, away from Tarkov. Yeah. Then it's like, gotta, hey, I'm hopping on. Forty-seven minutes later. Hey, I'm just logging in. It's like, okay, well, I'm going Bro, to bed. All right, I got I got 9.30 bedtime. Originally, before this shit blew up, I was looking for a game that we could play because we were getting our cheeks absolutely clapped on yeah. Fortnite and COD. Like, <laughs> dude, we're too old. Like, I can't keep I can't up. Keep I, can't, up. I, can't, I don't play video games 24-7, even though I want to. I just... I don't, and mm-hmm. uh, I get close. Sometimes I play in Scoot Dreamer. Um, <laughs> oh, I know. But um, I know. I see the bandwidth. Yeah. Anyways, okay. uh, it's, it's so I'm looking for a, a teamwork game, right? Like just something, yeah, where we can fight computers yes. and not get as mad when I get no scope shot in the head from three miles away. <laughs> um, so I found Hell Divers. We download. We start playing. And I was like, "This is it, dude. This is perfect. Like, it's the mm-hmm. perfect team camaraderie camaraderie uh, game that I can think of." But it turns out it wasn't. It, I think I got more angry at this game. <laughs> the game is so team fun. killing, which I I'm, I love that it's in the game. But my god, I don't know if it's, it's anyone hilarious. else that's listening to this, but my friends <laughs> are fucking idiots. <laughs> So, and they just kill so, you. <laughs> so I did that to a stranger in one of my games. Oh, no, because he was getting his just butt cheeks just <laughs> collapsed. And I'm like, dude's dead anyway. Mm-hmm. So I dropped this like orbital strike thing on him. And I remember he, cause like on the PS5, you can actually type to the other player. Yep. All he responded back once it came down was thanks. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Anyway, we're not talking about Helldivers 2. Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. game. Super fun. We are talking about cars today, which by the way, if you guys are jumping in, you got your tax return, you're looking to maybe spend a little bit of cash on your car. Mind your car martini works. You can get it from the friend who actually want to help build your car and not big corporate phonies. Holy That's all Jesus that I got. Christ. Sorry, I just wanted to wake everybody loud. up. I was getting a little worried about your phone, but then I, I saw the screen. I wasn't as worried anymore. Oh, that's kind of messed up, dude. <laughs> anyway, if your name is Tim S, Kevin H, James K, Jeffrey B, Tim S again. Nice job, dude. Thanks, Tim. James V, Jeffrey B, Joe E, Caliber C. That's a business. Caliber, no, Caliber Collision. SRT we know those guys. <laughs> Caden D, Angus C, Jonathan M. Hey, Jonathan, M- that's the guy that I bought my B7A4 wagon from way no back shit. in the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, Tim L., which is cool. Jacob I., uh, Michael M., David T., or Oscar S. Thank you so much for picking something up from the website. I don't care how long that, that list gets. That was a lot of names. That was a big list. I don't care how long that list gets. I'm going to say it every time. <laughs> Thank it means you the so much. world because we got a bill to pay, and that pay is that's rent. We got rent to pay. Oh, seriously, it's so dope. And like, to see the the parts that have been coming through that yeah, people are good ordering, dude, stuff. I good stuff. I I don't think I could feel good better. Stuff. Like it, it is so sick. You guys are buying such dope stuff, and like the fact that we can be a part of that, and like you guys are getting fucking Graham lights or works or mm-hmm. rays or even it's Continental tires, four yeah. channel coil. Like, dude, it's just so dope to see you guys. Like, obviously, you're hanging out, listening to the podcast, yeah. seeing what we're posting. You're picking up the stuff we're talking about, mm-hmm. and that is so dope because it's all the shit we love. So yeah. every time you're gonna a, love it, uh, order that comes <laughs> yeah. through and it's for dope stuff. It's it almost feels like I'm ordering it for my <laughs> car. Like I, I just get so damn excited. So we do guys. we do see every single order, yeah. and we do get a notification. Like yeah. uh, I promise. Lars and I were playing Hell Divers before his PC fucking bunked out, and he'd be like, an email would come in, it shows up on our phone, and mm-hmm. it's like, ah, oh, hey. We got an order. Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> so we do appreciate it. But hey, let's talk about 
updates with the old cars. Dakota, you got anything exciting? Um, no, still got to order parts for the Supra. Uh, we've been driving the Golf R. Absolutely love it. Took it up to Green Bay. Um, and we've been making a parts list. I actually had Maya put together like a, a Google a Sheet. Big, oh, yes, a, yes, yeah. yes. And she's killing That's it. Huge. She's super good at big organizing set. stuff. I'm not. Um, so we're just finding parts we like, and we're planning out a build series for that. So I'm so excited. I can't believe how many aftermarket parts there are for the Golf R. Like, if you think about the Golf R, it should have aftermarket yeah, parts, but yeah. like it's a, it's a tight knit group. Not you don't see golf R's fucking rolling around everywhere. Mm-hmm. I have a confession to make. Oh, oh sorry to hear. No, that. please go I, ahead. <laughs> I have to apologize about the volume knob not er, rotating yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, you do. I do because my mom came down this weekend and she, oh, has, she has a Volkswagen a Passat. Yeah, R line. I don't know how she managed up with that, but it's nice. And got in there and I noticed it. Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh my god!" And it's, it's like stupid, isn't kinked it? Kinked off to the side. I'm like, <laughs> "That's terrible." That is fucking stupid. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that feels good. It was the first thing I noticed. It feels good to have you. Know- yeah, I know that was yeah. like. The first- I'm using. I'm like, well, it's just like, the lack. Why? I know. Why? <laughs> why did they not fucking? Anyways, um, so yeah, and then slightly off topic of cars. I uh, over the weekend. I did this kind of in related to cars because it's a thought process that I was trying to get myself into. That's I don't fair. have patience. Oh. What? I don't. I don't believe you. What do you mean have attention to detail like I want? That I would argue. Like I would. Okay. Want. Yeah, I would. Like I want. Okay. All right. Um. So, something that teaches patience and has attention to detail the most. Tetris. Thing I could think of was building a Gundam. Gundam. Plastic model. Oh, like the the f- robot. Yeah. yeah. So ah. I built one of those this weekend, and holy shit! Yeah. That, How big is it? Show your finger. It's a yeah. Show your work. One forty four. Show your finger. Picture. Oh, what am I looking yeah. at? I cut my finger up. I cut oh. my finger up. Speak of the devil, there's <laughs> oh boxes of rays coming in <laughs> as we're talking about all the cool stuff that's getting sent to us <laughs> that you guys are picking oh, up. Shit. Literally, FedEx is dropping off some rays for uh, a customer and a couple Conse boxes. That is absolutely sick. Jels, you're going to have to get me right, <laughs> yeah. but Carissa, I have to help. Get that. I, Carissa, I, I, help. help. <laughs> help. <laughs> Hurry, rush, anxiety. <laughs> Heart pressure, blood rate. That is so cool. Speak oh, here, of the let me devil. Show you yeah, let me see a picture. picture of it. We actually quick. share bruises too. Yeah, look, your hands look. are all cut up for another reason, which we'll get into. Yeah, mine's in a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this. that. Let's, uh, let's, that's awesome, by the way. That was super cool to see. So a lot oh, of detail and like yeah. literally you can see every little microscopic thing that's that you so need to. That's so satisfying. Yeah, you need to do on it. So I just recorded some of that. Um, but the reason, again, that I want to do that is because like I, I suffer with just sitting down and focusing on a singular task. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to do it in a fun way. And dude, it was so relaxing. Put on some music, building that thing. Um, and I, I think of that when filming now and uh, editing and working on cars. Slow down. Yeah. Just do it right. <laughs> And get precise with things, yeah. and that's how I want to get with my build. So I wanted to do something that uh, could ease me into that because yeah. I really struggle with Absolutely. it. Absolutely, that was oh, one of awesome. the that was one of the things I realized with building the S two thousand, which the first episode goes live next week, which that's I'm really huge. really excited for, um, is how much more fun it is when you have a vision, when you have a plan, when you give yourself space to mm. do it right, and you yeah. don't try to rush it. Which in the world of YouTube. Like, bless Adam and TJ and Dustin and all those guys' hearts because I don't know how they manage to build cars at the speed in which they do it, but, like... Because something always goes wrong. Yeah, but always. it's it's intense how, like, how stressful it can get and how fast you'll start cutting corners because you just mm-hmm. want to get the thing done, where it's, like, the S2000 has been really fun for me kind of getting the seats, getting the, you know, the fire extinguisher, getting the roll bar, getting mm-hmm. all of it at, Doing you know, it right. batching it all and kind of saying, okay, what else do I need? I just got to make sure I got all the right stuff. And then when you go to install it all, you're way more prepared for it. Which well, is and I love how you film this one, how you're putting all the series together at once yeah. rather than like you get an episode done one week, release it. Now you have to work on episode two yep. and it, oh, I got to get it done. Episode yeah. two has to go up this week because you, you literally set yourself up for failure with that. Yeah, so yeah. I love how you, I'm so excited to see that series. Yeah, I'm really excited to, to get it done. And like, I think we have two episodes left. I'll be filming the second to last episode this upcoming weekend. And then the final episode will be, hopefully, the car will be right across the street for something. And then she'll be pretty much oh, yeah. ready for its uh, debut oh, in, that's in super April. Awesome. So. That, dude, that's a, that's a huge accomplishment. Like, seeing where that car was just a few months ago to, to now, yeah. like, that's, that's an insane transformation that it's going through. What about you? What's new with you? 
Oh, you know, I'm just working on other people's stuff. I was going to say, Evan works <laughs> on your car, but... Well, would you look at that? <laughs> yeah, hey, that <laughs> highlighter a, in the background. Yeah, take a gander back here. Dude. Um, down, let's talk about downpipes on the new Z for a second, huh? One Listen. second before we get into that. Okay. Just how I said that. You know the highlighters that we use in school? Yeah. Yeah. You should do a wrap. Of that, like just like the, the big, text on the side, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the big highlight. So awesome. funny. Okay. Anyway, sorry. So, so for those that don't know, uh, we decided to finish up the FI exhaust, which we? included down pipes. So, Both of them. Yeah. So here's the here's the tricky here's the tricky thing about that. I put up a joke on my Instagram story. I was like, TJ Hunt, <laughs> how did you do this? Because Gels and I were underneath that. Gels we were, we were already like seven hours into well, it. We were seven hours into this. We're actually keeping track. And um, <laughs> we like couldn't get it at all. And TJ Hunt responds with, LOL, it sucks. Yeah, it was actually that, it was terrible. Laugh my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Terrible Lamau. Lamau. Wow. And then Dustin Williams, uh, hit, like his friend, and he also does uh, like the mechanic work. Mm -hmm. Tim. Tim. It goes by Grandmaster Tim. I Grandmaster think. Grandmaster Tim. He's Tim's an a good awesome guy. dude. Yeah. Awesome good dude. Guy. Also uh, good mechanic. He responded with uh, LOL or something like that. It was also <laughs> terrible. <laughs> And then I started going through the list, like Vivid Racing yep. DM'd me yep. and yep. said, good luck, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how did you do it? And he's like, swivel, extension, swivel, extension, yeah. luck. Adapter. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Dude, it's in such a bad spot. It's, it's the absolute, it, this it's is honestly, terrible. and I say this not trying to be dramatic, that is probably the worst part I've ever tried to remove on a car ever. This isn't a garage no. Do it in a weekend no. type thing. Like you should no. get a fucking lift and have all the right tools to yes. do this. It's and even then, it's it's not even so much of like obviously like laying on your back sucks and like doing yeah. that kind of stuff sucks. But it's like the the main problem with this is like the the secondary cats or the secondary downpipe cat, whatever you want to call it. They're they're easy. They're still kind of a pain in the ass to get to, but, but they're get easy out. enough to get out. Mm -hmm. We got those out in a matter of like an hour, mm -hmm. if that. The primary cat. Like that comes right off of the turbo, so like the actual downpipe itself is not only tucked way up in there that it's hard to get at, but they have multiple heat shields around them, and these heat shields are in like three pieces mm -hmm. that are all bolted together with tiny recessed bolts, recessed in the and heat it, shield. Yes, and it's like underneath like the head of the engine, and it's like tucked way back in there, and you got. Try to get a little wrench back in there, but then everything on this goddamn car is torqued to 300 foot pounds for it some is. reason, true. including these heat shield bolts, which I don't understand. Every time you guys get a bolt loose on there, it sounds like something broke catastrophically. Yes. So Literally. I would love to know, and and maybe one day we'll be able to ask Nissan this because I still love Nissan. Like I love driving them, love modifying them, all that sort of stuff. But some part of me, <laughs> like the analytical part of me, wants to ask him and be like, was that your solution for like the overheating issue? Like when you look all at the these these too. engines and the Infinity Q50 and and all that stuff, the red line or whatever it yeah, was, yeah, like yeah. that engine pretty much came into yep. this car, and I'm pretty sure the Z is narrower than the Infinity in terms of like the front engine base space. Mm -hmm. I'd really love to take a look, but it's like, do you think at Nissan Infinity they're like we have to do something about this heat, and they're just like I don't know, strap a bunch of fucking heat shields to I it and tighten them down while the <laughs> engine's out, and then once it's in there, it's in there because. It's not even serviceable. No. There's nothing no, about it, that it that's would, serviceable. It would have to be, like, because we're talking about it, like, bro, we're, it was literally, like, a couple afternoons, and it's, like, late afternoons, and I know you worked on it. Like, yeah. like we're, we're probably, what would you say, like, a good total hour-wise? What are you saying? Well, I would, if I were to include, because Steven actually yep. helped out, Dustin helped out, mm -hmm. I tried to get at it on mm -hmm. Friday night, and, and I worked on it Thursday. on basically Wednesday and Thursday. I would say we're probably 25 hours into it. <laughs> I'm filming it, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, but the thing is, is it's like, frustrating. So, it's so, not like, oh, Alex, you just need the right tool. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, have you, we need luck. <laughs> we need lady luck on our side because even then, like, we were trying to get, like, it seated on. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to explain it. It doesn't even, like, fucking seat. Yeah. Correctly. So it's like, yeah, you, <laughs> you get the heat shield, like, the bolts out, but then it just won't fucking come out. <laughs> like, yeah. Because it's all, like, in a joint. <laughs> It's like three pieces like conjoined together, then it's like wrapped around something. Like I remember the one I literally just grabbed a pry bar and I'm like, this round thing is about to be flat. <laughs> and we are smacking it with a hammer. We're smacking it with pry bars. I finally get out and just chuck I, it. <laughs> it I looks have, like a like a pan. Yeah, just I have a confession though. What's up? Uh oh. So on Friday night, do? 
I was well, I was really trying to impress you, Gels. Okay. Because I was underneath there and I'm like, I'm I wanna get this out. Mm-hmm. If I can get this out, I'll feel like I really did my We part. actually made progress. Yeah. Yeah. So I removed there's like a brace I removed, and then I also removed a heat shield component for like the wiring to get more access to the side, right? Yep. And I'm like, I'm at it for an hour, making no progress. Yep. I'm getting increasingly frustrated. I'm not a big boy. I grab the pry bar and I'm like, I am getting this heat shield out of the way. Either it's gonna get cut in half. Or it's gonna move because yeah. it was. I could see the bolt. I could yeah. see the V band. Yeah, because that's the biggest it thing you need. Right to, there. So, yeah, the biggest thing is you need to get to the V band. But the V band is covered by like all of these heat shields and get access to it. You need to remove all these heat a, shields. A legendary level amount of heat yes. shields. So I'm like, if I just bash it, we'll be good. Sure. So I grab the pry bar, grab a hammer, readjust my my butt, and I just start swinging. Oh god. I don't like okay. where this is going. No, 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 no. There was a there was a method. So I'm smashing, 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 mm-hmm. and I'm like. I look back under there. I'm like, wow, I have a lot more space. Where's the V-band? And I look, and the V-band bolt's gone. And I'm like, it was right there. What the hell? Where did it go? And I'm looking, and I'm like, did I, did I break it off? Did I, because I was obviously smacking it. I'm like, there's got it. Something's wrong. Well, what I realized, Jelfry, mm-hmm. is that the heat shields were actually... The, the back of it was connected to the V-band. So as I smashed the heat shield, it moved it up. the bolt for the V-band twisted up and was gone. No. Yeah. So when Steven went back in there just to help out the next day on Saturday, he had to twist it all back down okay. to okay. get the V-band yeah. loose. Yeah. Yeah. So I made it worse. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. I was going to say, please to tell me that's it. the one that you at least got out. We got one out. We got one out. There's one on the floor over there. I don't know how. I don't know that it's there. Steven helped. Steven, thank God for Steven. Yeah, it's um, insane. But yeah. So if you have any sons and you're like, wow, I really want to get uh, an aftermarket exhaust, I'm going to say yes. Just, However, just it's the- not going to make that big of a difference because it's still quiet as hell mm-hmm. because the, the, the downpipes. Yeah. So when you go to do the downpipes part. Just do the secondary ones. You can just do the secondary <laughs> ones or you're going to need to probably, I would highly recommend go to Buying a shop. Buying a Supra. Oh. Go to a shop. Yeah. Supra took two hours. Because the full exhaust. At one point, Gels and I were actually considering just dropping the. Well, that's what I was trying to get at. Yeah, you were talking like twenty five hours into this. It's like we literally could have drained the fluids out, pulled this motor out in probably like eight hours. Yeah. And had it done, because yeah, there's no way, like you said, it's not a serviceable serviceable component. Would not do again. There's no way that 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 is meant to come out the way that we have been able, and some people have been able to do it. The best part is, is the next exhaust we have to do is the Ferrari, and the next exhaust we have to do after that is the E46. So I'm excited to see the comparison. I just, of I'm difficulty. confident that it can't be worse. I don't think there are any because everyone that we've talked to have been like, "This is the worst thing that I've done. I will never do it again." Yeah. yeah. This is the worst thing I've ever had to do. I've never done. And I've owned like a rusty two G Eclipse before. Fun fact: the downpipes were actually supposed to be on before Riverside. We were going to do it, yeah. <laughs> but we were like, "Alex, Riverside's coming on in like a week." It no, was it actually was like, it was like two days. Yeah, it was forty eight oh. hours. And uh, <laughs> me and Jels watched a couple of videos, and people were like, "This, this is terrible." Mm-hmm. And so Alex we was like, like Let's "Oh, not you're do just going to listen to one dude on the internet." <laughs> TJ Hunt said it's hard, so you're not going to do. It. That was still up to last week until he got under there and was twenty five <laughs> hours into it. It was like. Yeah. Okay, I get it. <laughs> you know, we learn, and we that's learn. what that's what's important. Mm-hmm. No, so the Z is uh, Z is getting finished up. We're in the downpipe. We will we do it. VR, we got we a VR tuned that's going to go on it as well. And I'm so excited to see that car with a tune. It's got it. Then yeah, she's really going to. I'm excited to hear She's going to really. Rip. Yeah, me too. And then uh, what's next? We got some stuff for the 430 that's going to yeah. go under the knife, and then the S2000 is getting done. The Glory doesn't need anything why are you putting an exhaust on the furry if it has exhaust fun fact uh <laughs> i like fun the facts. agency power exhaust on it is old and it cracks mm. i don't know if it's because it's made of titanium i don't know if it's just a poor design it's an older exhaust but every year it Something cracks breaks, and so. breaks and That's and and like if you look at the back of the car the actual exhaust there's like <laughs> nine Nine welds, oh, just God. putting it back together, and like there, there's even videos of it where it's like I turned it on at Appleton Takeover. It would have been 2022, I think, oh, yeah, yeah. where I turned it on, and you just, it's like, and then you just see the exhaust tip just, <laughs> and it just breaks. <laughs> so, I think Dustin has that clip. Yeah, so I'm, I'm done with dealing with that exhaust. Plus, gotcha. Gotcha. one of the biggest weak points, actually one of the only weak points on the 430 in terms of like the engine setup, is the manifolds. Um, Danger to manifold. They have a tendency Mm -hmm. to deteriorate, and then it'll shoot back up into the exhaust. So the Valtronic exhaust I have 
has race cats and it's a valved system. So it's going to sound like. Is a, it going to sound like a Formula One car? Yes. Ooh. Yes. I'm really excited. Race cats. I think it's cats racing like horses. Meow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Besides um, that, that's what I got. Cool. I mean, you also went to like Italy for like a couple days. Didn't we don't you? even got oh, time. We don't have time. We'll for talk that. about the, in the last segment the yeah, trip yeah. to Italy to that's buy funny. a Ferrari. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Okay. No, well, the, he had to return his Ferrari. Oh, he had to meet with the man. Yeah. God they damn. Finally got to him. It was all a uh, elaborate scheme. Yeah, different tax bracket <laughs> is what I realized being in Italy again. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we do want to say before we hop off this segment to say thank you to Continental Tire for being God. Martini Works God. podcast God. partner. What's been absolutely awesome though is you guys. It, I, we see the the orders come through for Conti yeah. tires, yes, and it does mean the world because mm. you're not going to be disappointed in what you're picking up. We're seeing a ton know. of people buying the DWS 06 Plus. We see a bunch of people actually Sport picking 02s. up this, yeah, well, the Extreme Contact Sport 02s. Absolutely, that's been a huge, uh, huge right. product, and we're really excited to see that. Is it time? It's time. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Extreme the, um, Contact Sport 02 <laughs> Challenge. <laughs> That's me. I just, I see a lot of, it's like the light is reflecting <laughs> off of Yes, I skin. have white arms. It's the winter and I stay inside, Alex. <laughs> Let me just, see your arms. Let's come white. here. No, that's yeah. why I wear long sleeves. But with that being said, outside of the fact that I'm blinded, um, Continental has been an absolutely incredible partner for us. They have some incredible tires and a lot of them are in stock. We're getting them uh, literally delivered to our front door like the day of that you order them and then we ship them out after we shoot a mm -hmm. couple photos and videos. So we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the support. It means the world. And when we're coming back, we're talking about Italy and maybe a couple other things like BMWs being worse than Hondas. What? Worse? Okay. Yeah. All right, so I finally remember why I was talking about BMW versus Honda. Yeah, you want to just compare? You want to run that one because, back by because me? I feel like people may not understand what I'm trying to say. I don't understand. First off, S2000 greater than E46, but that's just a personal rivalry between myself and Lars because we're going to be competing all season together. That's fair. But no, what I was thinking about is back in our day, we would look at Hondas when we were like 16, 17 years old, and it was like that was kind of the car you jumped into as like entry an level. entry level enthusiast, kind of can do anything with, go Could anywhere with. Could be advanced with. level Could if you be, have deep pockets. If you have money, you can do stuff with it. But yeah, if you're broke, you're kind of just putzing around in a one Yeah, some bolt-ons yeah, and some wheels. Yeah, intake yep. that goes through the fender and blah, Hell, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And then I was thinking about it, I'm like, you know, I don't really see those cars uh, that much anymore in terms of like you're 16, 17, you're jumping into your first platform. They're but what clapped. I am seeing is a lot of BMWs. Like, a lot of 328s. Like E90 uh, generation? E90 yes, generation. a ton. Yeah. Like the the rich version of getting like a like a SI is a 335. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking like maybe I may be a little bit off here, but I feel like BMWs are becoming like that entry level, which is so weird to say in the same sentence. <laughs> I know. BMW <laughs> is the entry level car enthusiast car mm -hmm. of 2024. Well, I feel like, you know, they've, they've been around for long enough, now, especially like when we're talking specifically like the E90, E92 generation. They've been out for a long enough time. They've racked some miles on them, but like they've held up. They've had their turbos replaced, like they're pretty much decent, um, you know. But yeah, they're they're an obtainable, turbocharged six cylinder car that's capable of a lot. Those engines are insane. They're gonna teach you about maintenance, real. Yeah, quick. they're gonna teach yes. you about maintenance real quick. Um, and yeah, and they're littered everywhere. There's so many of those damn cars. So it's like even even from like the three thirty fives to the one thirty fives to the one twenty eight, like any any of those like uh cars out there you can you can at least have time of filming this and now we're going to drive up all the prices on them. Are oh, you the made this um, 328 yeah. more expensive yeah i mean you can pick them up for relatively cheap i mean mario got that one for yeah, yeah but cheap mario's dash looks like a christmas light so you'll it's, have it's, that it just you'll have. Me, are, you, are, are you saying but, the honda civics that we were picking up back in the day also didn't have the same true. amount of christmas yeah, tree lights like on for an o2 sensor yeah 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 these are like, dude, you get a million lights going. I, <laughs> listen, it can be good listen, cars. I'm I've, just saying the I've cheap been, ones. I've oh, been yeah. in your Volkswagen. Scary. And it's what always a fun game to decide how many lights are going to turn you on. You know exactly which been... lights are going to turn on. The brake light, the coolant light. <laughs> there, there, no, there's some. <laughs> some are intermittent and some are always. The traction <laughs> control, brake, pad light. That's one, yeah. And uh, fuck, what's the other one? Coolant. 
No. <laughs> that no. one's intermittent. Sometimes it does it. Sometimes it depends it on how cold it is. Dude, it's so ridiculous. It is. And it does leak a little bit of coolant. But still, even if it's topped off, sometimes it comes on just because it's cold. Have you ever I, seen a, a, a light pop up on your dash? Because we all expect certain lights, right? But like, have you ever seen a light pop up on your dash and you're like, uh-oh. What is that? And you've yes. never seen it before? Yeah, especially what, with Volkswagen. What is it and where were you? I had to Google and figure out the fucking <laughs> brake pad light. I didn't know what... I, I wasn't used to cars having a brake pad specific light that looks like a check engine light. Like, it's not a, like a common symbol. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this thing? So I looked that up. Um, I think that's... Only, I'm trying to think. I got a check engine in the Supra in Tennessee, which scared me, but yeah. it was I think, just the gas cap. Okay, this happened in the RX-8, actually, and it was, like, not too long after. It was, like, the first time, like, really driving it outside of, like, buying it and driving back from Illinois. Okay. Um, if you were to think, I'm going to tell you what it is. If you were to think of what a coolant light is, a low coolant light. Oh, I'm aware. Yes. What <laughs> Yes. What would that symbol be? Oh, like a little boat with, like, the... Well, it is a top. weird one in the yeah. Volkswagen. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's a it looks, common one. What does it look like? It looks like know, a boat. Like a line with lines? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. See, that's yes, right. What about what if I told you I'm gonna I'm gonna put a picture of this in the fucking podcast because it I it blew me for like this light came on. It looks like a little fucking circus tent. <laughs> I need to show you a photo of this a circus yes. tent. Yeah, and I'm like, it came on and it's red and it's bright and it's like, bing, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, it literally looks like it's like a little. And it's got like like straight cool and light. By the way, go like, stop at Valley Fair. Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck is that? I like I pull over immediately. I'm like, yeah. this is a rotary. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I Apex just bought light it. Came on. Yeah, the Apex <laughs> Seal light came on or something. And I like pulled over. I'm like, I literally googled circus light tent <laughs> Mazda RX8. And everyone's like, what the fuck is this? Everyone's like, oh, check your coolant. That one comes on intermittently. I don't know. I don't know if there's like a bubble in the system. Like, it'll yeah. just come on. Because I've checked it. It's fine. So I don't That's know. Weird. But yeah, that, that was a really, really weird one for me. Also, the my BMW has some really odd ones that it throws my way to. Mm. I remember one time, it was like a couple of weeks ago, it just threw like what looked like a car lift light at me. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And it's like, <laughs> maintenance maybe soon. Otherwise, it, your battery could be low. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, What? I think that would be that would be such a fun short series we should do where it's like Volkswagen dash lights explained yeah, just and like it's the really literally weird just ones. like yeah. the weird ones is like could be your coolant or maybe your battery's just disconnected yeah. we don't know that was that, the the BMW one was another good one because I I was sitting I went to pick up lunch and I like drove it there like got back in turned it on and I'm like what is that now <laughs> and I'm like literally googling it and it's like no one had a, a clear answer they're like, like five different it, things. literally it could be. A, your engine shot, or your battery could be low, or it could be the alternator, or maybe probably the alternator. Doing, probably the alternator. <laughs> it, there were so many things, and it's like, why can't why can't it just tell me? Why? The how have we not integrated like a OBD two reader in our cars now? Mm -mm. We have forty eight inch displays yeah, I, in our vehicle. That's a really but good. We point, can't actually. pull. The day we just are Nissan, still giving codes. Yeah. Nissan we can't will just have it built in. Nissan will tell me that I'm a good boy monthly on a report it's system, 30, but it won't give me an OBD2 <laughs> thing. To I know tell me damn what's wrong well when car. it's tw or 37 degrees out, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I would say the weirdest one I ever got uh, was with the Ferrari. The Ferrari has the worst uh, dash that's warning have some system. Weird ones. Yeah, the Ferrari has the worst dash warning system I've ever experienced in my life. So, because of the way Ferrari do. Everything is like interlinked, meaning that the frunk has a sensor as to when it's popped or when it's closed, and so does the trunk. Yep. Okay. Standard data sure. rates apply. Yeah. Here's the thing that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When the system starts to fail on the engine bay closing, that little sensor that's back there, yeah. if it doesn't recognize that it's fully closed and you go to put it into operating position and it's warmed up and you start driving, the e-gear warning will go off, which is e a fifteen thousand dollar system repair. Oh, but it's not that. It's because the back of your car is not closed all the way, or the <laughs> sensor is going out. Because it'll start sending the incorrect signal through, and your ECU picks it up as could be your e-gear. Could be the e-gear. Could be the. <laughs> could be the probably the e-gear. <laughs> so the first time I got that warning was right after we dumped coolant out of the mm, transmission, mm -hmm. swapped everything over, began you know going through all the coolant cycles, and then 
for some reason or another, I was driving and I looked down and I was like, what is that? Is that my transmission telling me it's bad? <laughs> oh, this no. is very scary. And then I called Pat, who's been a lifesaver anytime I've had questions. And I've been like, Pat, what is this? He goes, oh, it's probably just your trunk thing isn't working anymore. <laughs> it's like a $200. Come on in. I'll get it fixed for you. So we go. We got a new one, installed it, closed it. Sensor never, came, go on. never came back. Hold on. I want to run something back. Do you guys say that the coolant light, there's a boat? I didn't say that. Alex kept saying that. Well, it kind of looks like a boat. I don't know. Like a it's little. A, it's a thermometer. I, no, I kind of, yeah, I kind of get what he's saying. But yeah, but a thermometer is boring. Like it a looks like a boat. boat? Yeah. yeah. It's a thermometer. He's being creative. Let him be creative. Wait, <laughs> you, you look at that don't and you think thermometer in, first? Yeah. No, it's a I sail. never once thought like, oh, there are the, my boat lights on. No, it's a sailboat. It's just <laughs> your coolant. Boat. It's your coolant boat. Because it's on the water. <laughs> Needs more of no, it. Right. More water. Your boat's going to sink. <laughs> I don't know. Boat's on fire. Boat's um, on fire. I, I I'm did not have driving a, a crest liner. <laughs> I did have a weird one um, where I wish a light would have came on, but it never came on. Oh, I've had that. Um, <laughs> my Mark IV GTI. Uh, all of a sudden, like I got this car and I'm realizing every cold start, this bitch is starting so hard. Just like, and finally it would start up. And I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, so that there's multiple issues there, yep. except anytime I turned it off and then started back up, perfectly fine. Even with, if it was within an hour of drive, perfectly fine. Okay. And I'm like, why? Why every single time in the morning I get in my car and I have mm. to do this fucking dance <laughs> to get this thing to drive? No lights, nothing. Everything's fine. I find out the reason my car won't start in the morning is because of the door. Mm -hmm. What? Yep. The door <laughs> is the reason my car won't start, <laughs> Alex. Um, and it's because there is a switch in the door when you open it to kick on the fuel pump and prime it. And that sensor switch went out. So when I'm opening my door, my fuel pump isn't priming. I'm going to start and it's not turning over. Uh, so yeah, I'd have to sit yes. there and cycle my key a few times to get, get the, the fuel pump to go, <laughs> and then I could start it. Mm -hmm. But because of my door, my car won't the little, start in the morning. The little, sent the little clippy thing or the whatever the fuck it is. I, I have thing. a I have a That's embarrassing funny. story to go along with another one that I've seen. When we brought the 430 over here, there was a new light that came on. Oh, this and it was just an orange X. I'm like, that's, weird. that's terrifying. I'm like, it could have been a red X though. Ferrari like pinged down a Bluetooth, <laughs> like stop letting this car run. And so that's I'm like, your season desist. I'm like, this is scary. So that I go and I look at the odometer and it's 555, 555 miles, 555,555 miles. And that and bitch like, got some miles on it. I'm like, oh God, <laughs> did I just like brick my system or something yeah, like by exempt. letting it i'm like oh my god so i'm like i'm driving it and i'm like scared that it's just gonna like turn off and i'm like everything's running fine and i go to turn like the i think it's called like the marinello or, or marinara marinara yeah it's the Italian. switch on the the steering wheel and it won't let me switch i'm like oh god this is a problem so anyway message pat pull in the car and turn it off Thank god like oh my god and I ask him, I'm like, have you seen this before? And he goes, I have never seen that before. Oh, I'm no, like, you stumped oh, Pat. I'm like, Pat? The, he's the Ferrari. He's the Ferrari guy. <laughs> he's the, he's, Pat's a good guy. Pat looking. Knapp. Pat Knapp from, he knows Blair. Blair you from You had Classic swim Mechanics lessons together. I know together. Blair. I don't, you don't know Pat? I don't service my Ferrari a lot. <laughs> Yeah, his son Billy. Um, yeah, you went to you went to church yeah. with him when you were a kid. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> so Pat didn't know what it was, and I was very nervous. So I did what all good nervous car enthusiasts do. I turned Shut the car off, off <laughs> let it sit for ten minutes, and on. I went back to turn it back on, and it went away. So wait, no, 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 no. no. Okay. So this is a persistent issue. You have to give me a conclusion. So here is what happens. Oh, thank God. Oh, I thought God. you just. Never I thought this was still going on. So when you lose battery in this car, which it does quite often, which it does because we have a suspension issue. What happens is, is it stores like the very minimal amount of information it possibly can, and Same. the rest of it it completely wipes. So it'll forget like the the key fob code inside the, the key and all that sort of stuff. So what it needs to do is when you go and you turn the car on, it pretty much acts like it just fucking woke up from a slumber and doesn't know anything. And it takes like 15 minutes for like the systems to kind of come back on and remember what everything is and where everything belongs. But until then, it gives you an orange X to say, hey, dipshit, Nothing don't drive right. this right now. Are you saying your Ferrari was just tired? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I had to wake up. You well, you would be tired <laughs> too. Hibernation. You would be yeah. tired too uh, if you had to deal with the deals with. Okay. That's <laughs> that's, no, I don't know. Been through a life, a couple lives. He's like, yeah. just put me out of my <laughs> <laughs> Just let me die. <laughs> and I want another. That's one. wild. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't know Orange X was a dash that could yeah. be lit up. The yeah. Mo- most I've had to deal with recently is. I forgot how it opened my fuel door on my car the other week. That was about oh it. Oh my god, that was so fucking funny. Me and Jels were going to some like RC convention in Milwaukee, and dude, both of us are at Quick Trip, and <laughs> I was like, I can't get my gas. Back. And it was like and right as it, it like, was really it was cold. cold. Yeah, so we're like, oh, it's fucking froze shut. We deal with that more often than just thinking thoroughly. <laughs> I'm like wedging like my card, like my Quick Trip card, like in there and like trying to like pry it, like, it open. It's like one of the ones where you're supposed to just like push it in it. I'm like, I'm like, I've never had to deal with this. Like, why the fuck is it? It's got to be frozen. We're spending like 10 minutes out at the gas station. It's freezing cold. We're both trying to pry it. I'm like, wait, really fucking stupid question, Jules. <laughs> really stupid question. Is your car unlocked? He's like, what? Uh, I, I had been um, in the car. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but before even thinking about anything else, I'm like, huh, I wonder if I'm just losing my mind. And there actually is a release in here somewhere that I've just always pressed and then kind of like just forgot about. There's not. So I was in the car. Car was unlocked, but not all of it was unlocked, apparently, because I hit the unlock button and the door flew open. So I was like, yeah. you guys are a very special boys. <laughs> in fact, it was two of us and we're quote unquote car guys and we're just struggling, <laughs> reefing on this fucker. The more you know about cars, the more stupid things yeah. you do and you just accept them as the they are. The best part was the quick trip employee that was like replacing all the garbages out there, I knew was judging us so Oh, bad. yeah, we looked he like was, idiots. He was we looked so laughing stupid. Laughing hysterically. Yeah, yeah uh, that was... <laughs> That was something. Oh, it was funny though. Uh, the check engine light with the Supra and my thought process, because I looked up the code and I can't remember the exact code right now, but it was something with uh, EVAP. Mm-hmm. And most people say nine out of 10 times it's your gas cap. I, mean, I think I am having a gas cap mm-hmm, issue mm-hmm. where it's not turning all the way and then there's a little leak. Because yep. the light hasn't come back on. And the only time it has come back on is like 15 minutes after filling up my car with gas. Sure. The only time it keeps coming. So I'm pretty sure it's that. Um, but it's funny. We got the Gulf R. I went to fill it up. And there is a note on the gas cap that mm-hmm. says, make sure to turn all the way. Otherwise, you will get a check yep, engine yep, light. Yep. And I was like, whoa, I've never seen that actually printed on the gas cap. Mm-hmm. And it was weird. Hmm. How about it? I've never had that issue. My gas cap for a while just opened up randomly on the Ferrari. That's stupid. That's weird. That's because there's some gunk in there. And then I cleaned the gunk, gunk. out and we were good. We were good. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what the... So, BMW versus Honda. Yeah, so back to the BMW versus Honda. I think it's a fair... (laughs) I think it's a fair... Slight tangent. ...assessment. I think that if you're really looking for... I don't know if if a BMW is the best thing to buy. I've never heard Dell shut up about his E36. So I'm convinced that it is a good first car. He loved Wait, your that E36. Thing. Yeah, he had an E36. Nine hundred miles, E36, two hundred thirty thousand miles at a push started everywhere. Cash for a clunker. It was a fucking sick car. Yeah, sounds like it. He loved it. Manual. You have to at manual that point. rear wheel drive. Jasper has had his for fucking thirty five yeah. years. Yeah, right? the dude's and he's nineteen. The, the dude's twenty four. He's had a car for thirty seven years. <laughs> That's it makes no called. sense. He loves that thing. He made it he look does. good. He's constantly still modding it. I am convinced. That BMW is actually like a good starter car, and they make some good entry level shit. I think you can keep them for a really long yeah, time too. They're fun. You, you got to be careful though. If if I wouldn't have literally not been able to figure out the issue of why I could never start the damn car, and I would have to pop the clutch every fucking time, I probably would have kept. Driving. I feel like BMW is kind of that story though, where it's like. As long as, <laughs> as if as this long, were a little better, <laughs> as long as it doesn't have cancer, yeah, it'll be okay. But if the car has cancer, it's just a proverbial downhill mm, it was, slope. It the was whole thing really just starts too. to fall apart. It was really rough. There's no way to catch the ball as it's going down the hill with I the BMW. I still think Honda top tier, like that's a fantastic Absolutely. entry. Level. I don't know if BMW is honestly better than Honda at an entry think, level car, but I think it's a it's a completely other realm because you're yeah. talking about you know four cylinder front wheel drive, and then you're switching to like. You know, rear wheel drive, manual rear-wheel drive, or six yeah, cylinder. Uh, you you know. gotta have rear wheel drive to be I cool. St- now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, still it's... willing to bet, though, one of the all around best cars that you could ever buy Ooh. is this is huge. Is it like a 10th gen SI? Yeah, I, well, 10th gen, 9th gen, 9th well, gen. No, t- we 9th had... gen's the FK8. I don't know. Well, FK8 is the type R. You're saying a lot of numbers. I know, but that generation. That generation. That's the 10th, 10th gen, gen is the angular one. So the one, charge, first yeah, turbocharged. The one, one before that, that SI. Yeah, I like that one. Eighth and ninth gen. Eighth and I think that is. 
I still think that's like one of the best cars you can buy. It gives you everything you want. You get a peppy engine. You get manual. You can get a lot of space for passengers. You get a trunk. It yeah. looks good, in my opinion. I do think that, like, for first time people, if you're going to college and you're like, God, I just want a car that can kind of like do it all. Yeah. I do think the SI is See, one of the yeah, best. And ones. the reason I would say that, because we had a 10th gen, I liked it. It was a good car. I don't have any big complaints about it. It treated us very well, and it's probably the car we kept the longest in our fleet. Um, but what's nice about the 9th gen is that. I forgot where I was going with. Oh, they're cheaper than the 10 gen. 10 gen, so they're like 20 fucking grand. Yeah. So, sorry. Yeah, they are expensive. And, and when so you fast. compare that to like what you can get, like a 335 for. I think the 335, though, requires a more hands on approach to keeping it nice. Like the Honda is a self. It's just going to live. Self cleaning, yeah. self. It's going to take a lot of bullshit. Yeah, mm. BMW is like, you also need to hold me. You need to take care of me. Yeah. I got it. I think <laughs> the BMW is the cat. No, it's tough. It's tough to say. BMW Honda Cat, <laughs> BMW dog. The dog you're gonna have a ton of fun with. It's crazy. Probably get shit in the house a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> the cat's like you just you have it. It's dope. You love it. But it also just goes does its own thing. And it. it's fine. Yeah. yeah. You, you yeah. give it a little food here and there, and <laughs> you leave for a week. Cat's fine. Yeah. They live to be like 20 years old. Dog, you yeah. gotta you gotta handhold it. You yeah. Know, you gotta take My, it somewhere yeah. if you're leaving. You know. <laughs> I got nervous. My dog like, shit on the window. Drinks too much water, so <laughs> yeah, I'm still dealing with that. I thought that would <laughs> fix itself, but here we are, three years later, and I gotta fucking monitor the water intake. I watch <laughs> Joe's dog, and there's the wildest thing. That dog will drink until it pukes. <laughs> you have to be like, that's enough. You're good. You You're have good. to cut her off. It's, it's insane. insane. I've never seen some shit like that. I don't <laughs> oh, know what There's no threshold. Me. <laughs> and that it's not like she's like crazy <laughs> thirsty because like when you tell her stuff, she's like, oh okay, and then just goes and does her own thing. She has. That I've never seen an animal with less self control yeah. in my life yeah. for everything. Mm -hmm. it, it, it literally everything. We have to like just get it away, otherwise she <laughs> will just continue <laughs> to do. It. I don't understand. I can't. Just say. locked in at the task. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, there's a bowl there. I'm gonna drink the whole fucking thing <laughs> fast, <laughs> fast, <laughs> and then I'm gonna run as fast as I can. <laughs> Throw it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Uh, that's terrible. It's All like, right. It's like, uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> We're getting <laughs> on a tangent. Yeah, We're getting on a tangent. It's triggering something. <laughs> I can hear it. Do you guys want to talk about the next partner as I pull up what we're going to be talking about in the third segment? Yes, our next partner is Fortunato, which we've seen some orders come through too. Yes. And I'm so excited for those people because I absolutely love my Fortunato coilovers. Shout out to Fortunato. We're actually getting to go down there and visit. I've never been. I've talked about them for years and I've never been to the actual facility. So we've met up with the guys from there before. They're awesome guys, but getting to get hands on with them and film some stuff there, I'm so damn excited. Uh, and they sponsor the podcast. So thank you to Fortune Auto. If you're looking for a set of coilovers, I can't recommend the 500 series enough. Go pick them up right now. What are you doing? Stop listening to the podcast for five seconds, order those coilovers, and then come back. Because in the third segment, we're talking about Marinara. And spaghetti Ferrari. And right. for chicken Tortellini. Pepperoni. Alex got picked up and went to Italy, and he was like, hey, I'm going to Italy tomorrow. <laughs> so let's hear that story, because what the fuck? <laughs> that was wild. Yeah, yeah that was a... That was left a, us with Dustin. <laughs> that was a last-minute email I got where they're like, hey, you want to come... Uh, to Italy to hang out with Scuderia Ferrari uh, for, for a couple days and uh, announce this brand partnership with Peroni, Nastro, Azuro, 0.0%. Say that five times fast. I can't. I can't. So they were previously a partner of Aston Martin uh, last year, and then they switched over to Scuderia Ferrari to Everyone more align, going to Ferrari in to more align with their uh, heritage and their brand pedigree, which was kind of cool. So yeah, I was there for 48 hours. Here's the kicker. I was in Italy for 48 hours, and I was on planes for 48 hours. Yuck. Eight airports over the cross four days, which was, uh, Why which did was they do super that? exciting. Yeah, it was... Crazy how many times I took my shoes off and put my shoes back on to get through Jeez. the goddamn checkpoints. But no, it was a uh, it was really fun. So yeah, the first day we were there, it was all it was like non car stuff. So it was me and nineteen other people in total that Jesus. got to to go on this thing around around the globe, which was really cool. But they were all like journalists and fashionistas and 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 article writers and f more fashion people. Like I Becca and I spent two hours packing my my bag mm -hmm. because I wanted to look. 
really nice. And like, the I part. wanted to look like trendy and that I knew what I was doing. So like we put on the Midwest flair. We did as much as we could to make sure that everything mm-hmm. aligned. I was really proud of my outfits. Okay. And then I showed it for the first night. I'm like, I'm so fucked. <laughs> like this is, they, they look so much cooler. They look so much more natural and calm. Anyway, Wednesday we made tortellini with all of our own like handmade stuff we bought at the that's neat. local i don't even know how to explain it we just like we went down to this alleyway and there was all this Shop. food but it was all these places were 150 200 years old like older than our country yeah yeah older than australia which was just wild so i got to make tortellini which was pretty cool but then thursday was the big day we went to marinello where yeah. all the ferrari uh ferraris are made and then where the scuderia ferrari factory also is where the formula one cars are made that's so crazy. We had lunch uh, at the Ferrari restaurant, which was really exciting. What did you eat? Ferrari restaurant? What did you eat at the Ferrari restaurant? Tell me. Uh, it was, the first thing that I had was like a, uh, it was Snails. a, no, it was like a very old cheese <laughs> with like a, hey. like a dark caramel drizzle, which was like this appetite. It, it was okay. Cheese with drizzle? But then there were also these breadsticks <laughs> that came with. That was really good. The second thing we had was, it was like tortellini in an edible box. I'm not going to the Ferrari it was restaurant. Gold, it was gold and black. <laughs> and we ate that. And then we had a, a sausage, a really soft box sausage pasta? with like a duck sauce okay. on it. And then we had a Ferrari. Duck I think it was like an SF90 encased like cream dessert. It was a four course meal. It definitely wasn't. I bet you it was, it was really a lot good, of. But food. you didn't make it sound good. You <laughs> well, talked about it's cheese got, drizzle, I got box caramel pasta. drizzle, guys. I'm I, and old. duck glizzy. <laughs> It really was duck lizzy, dude. It was it was really good, but it was definitely a lot of the food there is is a little bit more uh, exciting. Yeah, like, like so here's here's okay. the yeah, here's the sausage up. with what like the, the duck sauce on. I it. can eat that in one bite. I promise. <laughs> There's like How a little crack. I don't well, know. included. I, I, Avi, yeah. How, not, much, how much would you think that is? Uh, you didn't take a peek at the price. If it has Ferrari anywhere <laughs> around it, more than I can afford. I'm going to stick to the Chinese buffet. Yeah, so that was uh, that was really exciting. But the coolest part was meeting, uh, I met Chuck. Chuck. Norris? I met Charles Leclerc. Oh. Does he go by Chuck? No. <laughs> okay, explain that. Do you know you explain, call him Chuck? Explain no. Explain who that is. Is Chuck short for <laughs> Charles? Yes. Oh, okay, Charles, Charles, <laughs> Charles Leclerc is a Formula One driver for Scuderia Ferrari. That's he's insane. Got, he's got the the neck of a fucking oak tree. I'll tell you that. You keep so saying you, that, and I don't... So, no, so here's, like, the thing. The here's the thing with Formula One. a heavy helmet or No, what? no, no. So here's the thing with Formula One. Your entire body is pretty much locked in this car, right? The only thing that actually experiences a lot of that, like, movement side to side as you're turning is your neck so these formula one drivers have full-on exercises just to build up the strength muscles in their neck which you see the pictures like if you see daniel ricardo and you actually like focus on his you'll notice his neck is the same width as his head and it's like that's kind of weird so i wanted to see what it was like in person because i was like maybe it's just different in person and then i saw chuck's neck and i was like this dude a handsome boy but goddamn his neck is thick that's so weird that like we we go to talk about (laughs) Your trip to Italy, and all you do is talk about this dude's neck. Tell me this dude's Chuck's neck. Tell me yeah, this. Let me see, because it the way you're talking about it, I got it. like, dude, it's got to be. Tell impressive. me how big this boy's neck is. Look at how big that boy's neck it's is. It's the same width as his head. No, it is. Yeah, yeah. but like, looking so, comparison. So yeah, you can tell. God damn. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't know. <laughs> I've seen the thick neck guy before, yeah. so I I was thinking like that. I need to be impressed. Oh, okay, sorry, but anyway, it was a really good time. <laughs> I got to uh, go to so Ferrari's launching a apparel like fashion line. Neat. Can't wait to not buy it. So hey. it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah, no. Worries. And uh, I think that has to do with like Lewis Hamilton coming on as a Ferrari ambassador because yeah. he's going to yeah. Ferrari yep. next year. I think he'll do good. Everyone going. I to do. Ferrari. I think he'll do. I think he'll do great. Um, I do believe Lewis Hamilton reminds me a little bit like Tom Brady, which is a controversial choice, but I do think it's going to be good for the Ferrari a lot of uh, like racing brand. I love Tom Brady, but that's again controversial. Someone take. here don't. Anyway. Uh, anyway, so we got to go to that. I got to see like their whole new line. That was kind of cool. And then we walked over to the museum. So we got to check out the Ferrari Museum. But on the way, I saw the most random car. Take a guess. It's a sports car, two doors. Guess what car I saw on my way to the other Ferrari uh, museum? Ford GT. No. Less cheaper. Than. Close. Mm. Was it domestic? Mm. Yep. Camaro. Yep. Yeah. I saw a 20. It had to be like some American yeah, muscle car. I saw a 20. Oh! 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 
What the hell? Alex kicked his coffee. Or you did. I think I did. Oh, oh shit. I didn't even. I'm in bed. Oh, no. Not the Yoda carpet. We got to clean that. <laughs> we'll clean that after. That's a fucking mess. I hate it. This is a disaster. <laughs> You're going to have to clean the cords, too, because now they're going to be sticky. Mm. 2023 Chevy Camaro red. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing I'd expect to see walking to the Ferrari. So at least so, it was red. So I stopped. I was like filming. I was just talking about walking over to the factory. Then the guy was like standing. There. I'm like, "Is this your car?" And he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Why? Why?" <laughs> I literally was like, "Why?" That shit probably don't even fit down the lanes yeah. in Italy. It looked it looked so out of place. <laughs> I imagine Next, it looks like, and it was a base model. It wasn't like a you know a, a high performance model. Yeah, yeah. It was just base, but it, it was so big. Mm -hmm. It yeah. was so beefy. And I'm like, "Why?" And he's like. I love Camaros. He's like, it's my right. favorite car. Is I love American cars. Is he like, like lives down the block from Transformers. I'm like, yeah. okay. And then on the si on the side of his car was two signatures, and I asked him who's the, who the signatures were, and it was Charles and and his little brother. I can't remember his name. I don't know if it's Arthur or something Chucky? like that. But also signed it. So they signed the side of this Camaro, and I was like, that's so oh, random. Sick. I mean, and then I went to the museum and I saw some cool nice. cars. And okay, what was what was the best part of the entire trip of Forty Eight Hours in Italy? What is the top moment? What do you got? <sighs> Sum it up. Inspire me to go. So one thing that I've always really enjoyed about travel is that when you go to places that are very old, you get to see like heritage in its finest. You know, like yeah. centuries of of history. And so going to Italy and when I was at we were in Bologna, going down oh. to going down to like the the market, I guess, and seeing these buildings that are like 200 years old, but these businesses that are in these buildings have been in business for 200 years and like Insane. they're family generational like eight generations deep and what they do is they make cheese. And it's just like this very yeah. simple thing. You know Jeez what I mean? Drizzle. But they've done it for 200 years. It better be so good. It's so cool. And it, it was just a very interesting. I really love seeing stuff like that because here mm -hmm. in America or here in, even like with Wisconsin, right? Like had, how how old can you time. get? Dude, yeah. it's like shit's open for like five weeks and it changes to something else. Yeah, then it gets shut down or something. So that was really cool. And then the pride of Ferrari mm -hmm. in Italy is always just a very intoxicating thing. Like you, you... They call it uh, tifosi, which is the term for, like, fan. But it's not specific fan to, like, Formula One or specific. Mm -hmm. You are just proud of, like, the Italian culture and, and the, the whatever it is that you're a part of, you're a tifosi. You're, you're just super sure. passionate. You're a huge fan. And you don't see that until you, like, go there. And then you see, like, the lines of people waiting for mm -hmm. Charles to just, like, so, like show up. How it up. impacts everybody. Yeah. And, like, even for Formula One, when they did their two-day testing... At Marinello just last week, I think it was, like, the thousands of people that were crowded around this track to get, like, maybe a couple minutes of the car going around the track. That's so like, cool. So, like, when Scuderia made the post, they're like, thank you, Tofosi, for all that you do. So, like, that's what they're called. And so to see that was, was really exciting. That is really cool. That's neat. That's all I got. I'm just watching this coffee stain just really set in. I know. It's oh, really, really soaking. seeping in. Um, Thanks, Dick. You're welcome. you uh, dealt it, you'd clean it. All right, well, thing. let's jump into some other topics. It was <laughs> your foot, and that's what matters. First things first, the new BMW reportedly weighs 5,368 pounds. Same. And we're working. <laughs> Somebody goes fat shaming at its finest. Way to go, Motor One. Um, so that's got to be an SUV, right? No, M5 like is a four-door oh, sedan. I didn't hear you say M5. I didn't, I didn't. Maybe he did. I, I did. I didn't hear. I wasn't listening. I was thinking about. Apparently, it's a V8 coffee. with a battery and electric motors. And Those batteries heavy as. Four hundred. The Cayenne GTS is four hundred pounds lighter than this. To put it into comparison. I don't know what that is. It's an is SUV. It's a okay. big SUV. It's Jesus. Porsche's biggest SUV. God damn, dude. That that's cars do be getting heavy. It weighs more than his. Weighs more than an F one fifty. You'd think that would, Holy shit. that would affect the range. Uh, yeah, you're putting it into terms that I understand. Yeah, but we're in the F-150. <laughs> it's like F-150, but heavier. <laughs> Probably carries less, too. Okay. M5,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got one for you. Okay. Right off the cuff. Okay. Whenever you hear the word car, which vehicle comes to your mind first? Miata. The one I would draw as a kid. Damn. Nice job. Got it. 
Somebody He's, goes. I studied. Corolla. You know, like the weird, really shaped one. Like yeah. you said, car. That's what came it's to like my super brain. symmetrical. Yeah. It's actually an Audi TT. Yeah, it's a Tesla Cybertruck. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking like like snubby nose, really tall. That's an Audi. Where the people really you think? First gen TT. I mean, they're bubbly. <laughs> symmetrical as hell. first and the front. The most bubbly <laughs> car award is presented to the first generation Audi TT. Congratulations! Or we should do a podcast episode where we give awards to things that, <laughs> and we make up the awards. And then we actually message Audi and be like, yeah. you're, Congratulations. You're, send them a trophy. Please accept the trophy. What's your address? Your awards here. Where Where are you? <laughs> It's been publicized. Where would you like us to oh send this? Send it we to should, the local dealership. We should host a car show where it's just, you'd like it's to just ridiculous awards like yes. that. That'd be, that would be yes. really fun. A car meet, yeah. but have just a fucking yeah. dumbass trophy. <laughs> Worst paint. Yeah. <laughs> Most rust. Uh, okay. What, what cars, what cars look suspiciously the same? Cars look suspiciously the same? Uh, I've heard this a lot, but the... Uh, Civic Si and the newer Subaru WRX. Mm-hmm. I've okay. heard the rear ends are suspiciously the yeah. same. Um, let me think of more. I off. mean, a lot of people had some stuff to say about like the newer Mustangs and like the Camaros. They were talking about like the rear quarters yeah. looked a lot alike. Um, I, I kind of see it um, a little, but they're they're two domestic rear wheel drive sports cars. Yes, they're gonna have similarities. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's the fucking way it goes, bud. <laughs> um, Damn. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Nissan Z suspiciously looks like a lot of the other Z cars. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the in, badging in it. or the taillights? The taillights. They probably just had stock of the 300 ZX taillights somewhere. And they're like, we got to put these on something, we, bro. We need to figure out something. There's a ton, and I just can't brain fart Is them Is there any good now. ones on, on that list? Uh, most of them were just the Ferrari looking like the Mazda CX-30. Oh. <laughs> the <laughs> Ferrari Pro yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. All right. Ahead of its time is a phrase often used for cars. A little too often, perhaps, but which cars were truly ahead of their time? Honda S2000. Um, The digital cluster push to start, Mm -hmm. uh, just how the car feels in general, how it handles. I think the S2000 was a car that was ahead of its time more than pretty much any other car, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. The DeLorean could go ahead of its time. (laughs) Honestly. The VR4. The first yeah, that's a good one. Obviously, the tech oh, didn't, true, didn't stay, true. stay, but it had all the right pieces, like stuff that's mm-hmm. even used now to this day. Oh. All wheel steering, inflatable front bump, like the the drop down, yeah, yeah. rear diffuser, electronically controlled suspension. Did you say inflatable front bumper? Well, like it, it wasn't like active air. Well, no. So the active inflatable. air, I forget because <laughs> some cars actually it's not a plastic piece. It's like an inflatable like pouch oh almost. really yeah oh, okay and it inflates the pouch because it's easier interesting yeah it's weird that's where i thought you were going with that it Sorry. just sounded funny <laughs> it is a weird way to describe <laughs> it yes front bumper. i was at first i thought you were gonna say like uh like the spare tire that like you know they like inflate up but oh. i would say all the recent bmws are ahead of their time in aesthetics True. they come out you're like that's ugly then like fuck a few months later you're like i want it no, that I looks so it. good i, I love where it, it at. Yeah, yeah i see it i see it somehow yeah. they do that i don't know how they do it that is something I would love to study or figure BMW out. BMW is time traveling, and yeah. we need to get to the bottom of it. The BMW M2 competition, the new one, Lars yes. and I actually saw at SEMA, mm-hmm. and I Ugh. saw the wheels, mm-hmm. and I was like, I wouldn't switch them. No, they're cooler than any aftermarket wheel I would put on the M2. That's why. That's why some of those guys just switch side pocketing, around. back pocketing. Mm-hmm. They look like they're they look like a 3D printed wheel. I like it's side just the back. coolest little thing. It was just absolutely compliment. nuts. It's expected of you to wear right. pants to work, Dakota. <laughs> Depends where you work, I guess. Yeah. Somebody said the original 1990 LS400 sedan, a car built so well that, yeah. as the story goes, when GM bought one for their engineers to examine, they reported that GM would be unable to reproduce the construction tolerances and techniques for at least 10 years. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That's, that's pretty cool. That's a crazy one. Uh, the Porsche 959, twin turbo and all-wheel drive. It was very mm. uncommon at the time. The 2004 Toyota Prius, the thing uh, that carried Toyota through the recession. I still see those things on the road. <coughs> it is a, a lot pr- of them. Like I obviously, I'm not a huge Prius guy, but the Prius is a car that if you wanted to study what it was like to make the perfect car for the perfect time, the Toyota Prius was that car. I mean, they, I mean, say what you will about them, but like sixty sixty they, miles they per worked, hour. They did exactly what they were intended to. They work. There's a ton of them out there. The old ones look stupid as fuck. <laughs> they they yeah. did not age well. Uh, no. The new ones look great. My mom had one, so something worked. Somebody said R35 GTR. 
Which is I true. I mean, when you're saying, yeah, that came out in like fucking what, 2007? 2000, yeah, 2008. That's true. It, it was be, like the only car that was just an absolute fucking monster. Yeah. That it was out. one of the first cars to truly beat Porsche at their own true, game with true. The, the 911 Turbo S because it came around, it was like $60,000 too at the time, which was just nuts. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. Uh, oh. Let's see. What else do we got? <laughs> Somebody goes to the Ford Model T. No shit. <laughs> okay. Bit ahead of its time. Somebody did say this might be controversial. I'd like to get your guys' thoughts. This guy goes, okay. squints, looks left, looks right. Okay. Every Tesla vehicle. <laughs> Not necessarily good, but consistently ahead of their time. No. Really? No, Why do you say that? I don't think so. It was the first one to do autopilot, right? Successfully. Oh, yeah. I think Tesla's absolutely. First one to adopt fully no, electric vehicle it, in yeah, the state of California. It's absolutely ahead of its time because so many there's so many naysayers about it when in reality that yeah. is the future of cars. And then now there's already been copies with like people hopping on the electric train so i i and dude tesla's been out for a minute now yeah so i think it absolutely was ahead of its time there you go i Anything. still don't like them <laughs> you don't have to like them to I say know. it's ahead of I its know. time I'm, I'm just trying to think of like <clears throat> because they're the first ones to do but and I, I guess i would say that they do it decently well like i haven't heard of like any major issues with any of those things no, they just don't like the cold. Yeah, that's and true. I, I guess we are like, what do we do with the fucking battery when it's dead? <laughs> I will Fuck. say, speaking of EVs, the Lightning is, I think, ahead of its time. It's so ugly. It is ugly, mm-hmm. but it can tow. It has pretty decent range with the tow. It has 220 in the back of the bed, so you can run like a welder off of it. The charge speed is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. The inside is really awesome. Like, I like the Rivian. The Rivian yeah, is yeah. also... That the R1T is super cool. Oh, but it's insanely expensive. Six-figure vehicle. Well, also, and then if something happens to it... Yeah, they're total. a ton of money. Immediately. Whereas yeah. with the Lightning, it's still a Ford. You know what I mean? Right. So you can still There's get support. all that shit repaired. It's all replaceable. It get mass-produced like everything else. And that's why the thing that always scares me... Like, I like Tesla. It's getting more popular, which is good brings costs down for rely- like when you need to fix things. But things like Rivian and, and things like those Fiskers and stuff like that, they're so niche that if something happens to them, especially with a truck where it's a utility vehicle where shit's going to happen to it, it's just right. way too expensive to repair. you think the, like, insurance on the Rivian has to be just astronomical? They got to look at it and be like, if this vehicle gets damaged, it's going to cost us $100,000. I would assume so. So, like, anyone that picks up a Rivian, there's got to be some fucker. He's like, oh, my God, it's 10000 a month for a Rivian. I would happily <laughs> Just an I, yeah. I would happily buy an electric vehicle truck if half the battery didn't disappear when it was cold out and it could tow. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Like, that, that's literally, like, the perfect recipe for being up north is, like, if, if you could have something that could tow a little bit, at least get, like, 200 miles, like, a, an EV truck would be perfect. Aluminum body so it doesn't rust. No more oil changes. That'd be nice. Anyway, that's all that I got. Gels, anything you'd like to add besides you don't like the future? No. <laughs> that's, all you had. that's all you had. Dakota? I, I don't mind EVs. I'm happy that they exist and there's an audience. I am sad that gas cars will be phased out. I prefer those. That's what I want. I don't want an EV, but I don't mind that they exist. I mm-hmm. think it, it's cool to see the tech that's come with it because they spent a lot of time with like the digital dashes and actually making them good, unlike every other auto manufacturer pretty much. And then also um, the the amount of torque and power that those things yeah. make is respectable. I like anything that fucking goes fast. So if you can make it quick, I think it's neat, but not for me yet. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm not interested in owning one anytime soon. I think it'll it'll come down to time when they get a little bit more affordable because I think the cross the cross platform is really where the success is. You know, it's like a hybrid petrol engine with electric motors powering like, to, like the other, you know, the front axle, the rear axle or something like that. So you get a lot of that instant torque, but you still have the motor to support. I think that's like the right mix. The problem is is that technology is super super expensive right now. Making something fully electric or making something that's full ICE cheap. Putting them together, very expensive. The biggest thing that sucks about EVs right now is, like, for car enthusiasts, you can't tinker with them other than just wheels and suspension. You can't put an intake on. You can't put an exhaust on. Um, And I think that's one of the best parts about modifying a car is when you change how it sounds and get those noises. Like, it makes you fall in love with the car all over again. Yes, you can put wheels and lower the EV, but what are you going to do, overclock it after that? I don't don't know. That was when when I went to the Tesla takeover two years ago. It was such a weird experience to see the super passionate group of people that I would have argued are tech enthusiasts more than they were car enthusiasts. Because you went to the line of Teslas, right? And it's like wheels wrap, 
lowered. Yep. Wheels, wrap, lowered. Wheels, wrap. It's the same thing across the board. It's the mm-hmm. same three things. And it's like vanity plate. So then I would start going to like the vendor That's booth. That's the biggest one. Yeah. I'd go to like the vendor booth to see like what are people selling, you know, because at a car show or at a, you know, a motorsport. Yeah. It would be intakes and exhausts clutches, and headers and parts. clutches and parts. And I'm going around and it's like, this can charge four phones at the same time <laughs> plugged into your Tesla. It's like, this is a sunroof thing that can charge your tap. Like a lot of it, it felt like I was at a tech convention. Like everything for the, the car was like, here's how you can do more tech stuff with your techie car. It was nuts. It's so weird. Yeah. yeah, it is weird as hell, honestly. You guys will have to let us know what you think about EVs. Obviously, up north, where we're like the last to get all the trends and stuff, it's still not really hitting. But but in California, it's like the California Camry, so it's they're fucking everywhere. Anyway, anything else you like to add, Jels? He says no. Dakota says no. Mod your car at Martini Works. Hell yeah. And please don't forget to subscribe. If you guys have anything that you want to see on the site, drop a comment below. We're adding new stuff every day. We just got Valtronic. By the time this goes up, Race Quip and EBC Brake should also be out there. And we're adding as much as we can, as fast as we can. So we appreciate all the love. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.